What's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys who are new, I go by Locks by Lauren on Instagram and today I'm going to do a gray blending hair transformation for you guys. So this is a first time client. I've never highlighted her hair but she has pretty much some like previous highlights on the end and then all of that regrowth that you see right at the root is her natural gray pattern which I thought was so beautiful and I couldn't wait to give her a color that would really complement her natural hair color that way when this all grows out and the toner fades it just looks like her natural regrowth is like highlights into the color that I give her so I'm going to show you guys how I like to do some gray blending on this specific client so for my products that I'm using, I am using the Blommy Schwarzkopf Lightener and my first bowl of lightener is always going to be 6 and 20 equal parts and then I mix that 1 to 2 with the developer and powder and I'm starting off by detailing her hairline and I'm doing kind of like a medium sized weave and just angling around the hairline. I like to do this just in case like she puts her hair up. I want her to feel like there is a lot of color and um, that is blending with her gray throughout her hairline. So as I'm detailing the hairline here, I am doing two back to back. I sometimes will alternate doing like one or two just depending on how bold I want the coverage around the hairline here. So then after that, I'm going to start with my center parting where I take a center section throughout the whole head all the way to the other side of the hairline. And I'm pretty much going to just slice her hair all the way up and so back here since this is pretty much the underneath you can see she barely has any highlights here I'm just going in and slicing and kind of breaking this dark in the back a little bit up and I want this to be still dimensional I don't want the back part to be too too blonde because she doesn't have too much gray back here so I again want something that's going to blend so seamlessly with her natural gray pattern so I am taking my sections a little bit higher up and leaving it a little bit more dimensional I would say that my sectioning pattern could be like a quarter inch section up on each side but then you'll see as I get closer towards the top my sections will get a little bit closer together I'm only doing these sections a little bit further apart back here just because it's the underneath in the back and again because she doesn't really have too much gray so after I take that center part section I did about maybe like five to seven foils I'm going back in and only teasing um, the underneath the negative space that is in between my foils and just kind of like tipping out the ends I like to give a very soft tease as you can see that way it gives me a lot of room to blend out the tips and it really blurs out the lines really well for the lightener application here I am just using like the same formula so by now I have probably already bumped up my volume up to 20 volume and I'm just going to continue using 20 volume with the Blondie lightener throughout the rest of the head and I do do the same type of pattern all the way to the hairline so you can see it kind of stopped about like three inches off the front of the hairline and I've turned her around and now I'm starting in the front to detail her money piece area and I did a very small baby light right at the hairline and then after that I'm pretty much going to just slice her hair so the reason why I did a slight little baby light right at the hairline is because I just want that really soft blend whenever she puts her hair up. And then again, everything after that, I want um, to be nice and bold and blended. And we are leaving that a negative space, so that is why I am slicing here. And as you can see, my sections have gone a little bit closer together, especially with these first three to four foils right off the hairline. I don't like to take 
um, something two-dimensional right at the front because generally this is going to be where that money piece section is and I do like to keep my foils a little bit closer together but as I work my way towards the back to those back sections I am slightly leaving a little bit more extra negative space so that it gives that slight graduation where the color gets a little bit lighter a little bit bolder as it gets towards the front just as it would if like the sun was highlighting your hair just by like laying out in the sun and it gives those like front baby hairs or the front hairline pieces a little bit more of that sun kiss looked i like to try and mimic that even though we are doing something a little bit bolder to where the hair gradually gets a little bit lighter as it gets closer to the face so now that I'm on the sides, I am taking a slice here. I'm only taking a slice because I see that she has a little bit more gray hair. So I felt like it would blend everything a little bit better if I just sliced it instead of doing a baby light. Again, this is just catered to her gray pattern and what I felt like would work best with her hair type. So I pretty much did two slices back to back right at the hairline here because she had a bit more gray. And then I started to connect the rest up off the ear and just taking horizontal sections and that is how I like to connect the front and the back center section throughout my highlights. And again here since I'm on the sides I don't mind leaving a little bit more dimension because wherever she parts her hair is going to lay right on top of this. So after I've already foiled in my slices I'm going back in and giving very soft tees teases to kind of tip out the ends. You can see that my teases are very fluffy because I pretty much only teased it once or twice all the way from the bottom. I do it very lightly so it's easy for me to detangle it after I um, rinse out all the foils. But I just want to create a little bit of lightness throughout the ends to kind of give that slight ombre effect like it would naturally like if you were in the sun. So since my client had so much gray, I felt like her hair lifted very well and so I just kind of let it sit at room temperature and while some of the foils were ready on one side, um, the other side was still processing. So while that last side was still processing, I went ahead and started to just add a little bit more liner on the ends where she had those previous highlights because when I was slicing her and retouching the root part, I didn't really hit her old highlights highlights because I didn't want to over process them. I feel like they were already at pretty much like a level 8 or 9 and they just need a little bit more lift. So I'm going in now and just like pretty much brightening them up. I chose to do it this way because I didn't want to over process the ends and since her ends have already been lightened before, I want to take this part a little bit slower and a little bit more in sessions. So slowly get her ends a little bit lighter because I feel like that will just be a lot healthier on her hair and then I'll quickly share my toner formulation so for her root shadow I use the pulperite liquid demis I use 6-1 with their demi developer and then for her mids and ends I went ahead and mixed up a rapid toner from the pulperite line and I did about 20 grams of moonstone to 15 grams violet and then 15 grams of silver and then I added in about 100 grams of 6 volume to dilute it and make that 1 to 2. And here was the end result. You can see how beautiful her roots are going to blend in with her natural gray pattern. I feel like this color looked super natural on her. There is a little bit of warmth on the ends from her previous highlights that we are going to slowly lift um, to pretty much a level 10 to match her roots. But I feel like this was a really good first session for any type of gray blending especially on this client considering how much hair she had, how long her roots were, and her gray pattern. But she was so happy and thrilled with the results and you can already tell by looking at the roots that this is going to give her the most soft and seamless grow out and it really complements and looks super natural on her.
And again, any type of gray blending does vary on the client. I always kind of switch it up depending on how much gray my clients have. I like to customize the placement just for them so that it grows out really pretty with their natural and just kind of enhances their natural hair color. You know, lately, every time I do any type of gray blending on a client, it gets me super excited because I love seeing the look on my clients' faces that they can look forward to having their roots grow in and giving them that natural, beautiful highlight to the color that I've given them. And honestly, I feel like giving a client something that's very low maintenance and gives them something that makes them feel good about their natural hair color makes me super excited and happy for them. And yeah, I just like such a rewarding thing to see my clients just so excited for their hair color and they can't like wait to show it off. Alrighty guys, so that is it for this week's 100th video. Oh my gosh, I can't believe we've come this far. I've literally been making these videos every week for like two years now, which is crazy to me. And I am just so grateful for all of you guys or anyone who has ever taken the time to watch or even comment on my videos to give me feedback. It's such a rewarding process to see this channel grow and I can't wait to see what comes in the future. But as always, I will talk to you guys next week.